Good afternoon, everyone. I was told to get started right on time, so I'm going to get that underway. Um, my name is Chris. I'm here to talk to you about the Project Browser Strategic Initiative, where we're at, and how you can help. So we've been making a lot of wonderful progress over the last couple of years, and uh, we'll, we'll share where we're at and how you can help. Um, also, this QR code goes right to the slides, which is the same as that link that's kind of in the middle, bit.ly slash pbpittsburgh23. So if you want to follow along in the slides, uh, you can go ahead and scan the code or pull up that link. And uh, there's a bunch of links also in there. Yes, sir? Oh, because it's not the... Uh, uh, you do it, because otherwise it's going to mess up the whole presentation. Do like anyone with the link can view or something? No, in uh, the actual Google Docs sharing setting. So you got to go. So we'll get that underway ASAP. Thank you for that heads up. So what is the Project Browser Initiative? Um, Dries talked about it a little bit this morning in his Dries note, and as we'll see, he talked about it a couple of years ago in his Dries note as well. So uh, at DrupalCon North America in 2021, he talked about the project browser, his vision for it, his goal for it was to make it easy for site builders to find and install modules. And then in 2022, he clarified that a little bit further. He says people want to be able to discover great modules from within Drupal without having to go to drupal.org and then install those modules with the click of a button. So who are these people? He's talked at length about the idea of sort of ambitious site builders and who they are and what they do. But to us, we're really looking at getting back to some of the Drupal roots of low code, no code, making it easy to expand your platform without having to be super technical, without having to know a ton of the composer incantations that you need to do. So it's important that we remember that our target audience here are those site builders and those new to Drupal. So one thing that can happen from time to time when we present at camps and conferences is we end up speaking to a lot of um, really wonderful but really technical people. So I just want you to remember who we're targeting here with this project and what we're trying to go for as we look ahead. So what do we have for a project browser now? Website, drupal.org, you can go to build and modules, and you can use the search criteria here, and you can find the modules that you might want to use. Uh, or a lot of people also do these searches just on Google um, and sort of bypass the drupal.org search interface and end up finding modules that way. So these filters are maybe a little overwhelming to some of these, this target audience. I'm new to Drupal, so I don't necessarily know what stability or the security advisory coverage means. Um, or, you know, I'm a site builder and I just really am focused on what does it do, right? And in these results, we have a little bit of also inconsistency around um, how these descriptions are laid out. It's kind of up to the module maintainers to decide what's important. Some of those descriptions end up being highly technical and not necessarily written for our target audience. So where we have landed today is we do have a module in the contrib space called Project Browser. At this point, it's fairly useful. Um, we are on a beta 4 version. And what we're working towards is getting an MVP. If you're not familiar with that language from Agile, it's the minimum viable product. So what is the absolute minimum that would make Project Browser useful and functional to our target audience? And so we're working towards that MVP. We're currently on beta 4. Um, and you can try it now by clicking the Try It Now button from there. Okay. So what have we accomplished thus far? We have a decoupled architecture around the project browser. So the front end of the project browser is actually written in Svelte, the JavaScript framework Svelte. Um, 
and we have a pluggable source system. So that is to say, when you go and you get the list of modules that you want to display to your users and install them, you're actually making a request to your Drupal site from your browser from the front end in that decoupled way, and then it's going and fetching data from somewhere else in order to figure out what data to display. That's implemented as a plugin, which means you can extend Project Browser by writing your own source backend. And we actually have uh, example code for how to write your own source plugin and backend. There's an example module to do it. It's really only two methods, I think, uh, that you really need to worry about, so that's very easy to do. And as long as you're giving data back in the right structure, we'll present those modules to you. So this makes it really cool, really easy for you to say, if you're an institution of higher education, you know, a university or something, and you only have you know, 100 modules that are approved, you could write your own source plugin and give access to your users to add and install only those modules which you've approved. Kind of neat. We also have a faceted search with sensible defaults. So thinking about that ambitious site builder, that someone new to Drupal, we want to give you sensible defaults of the kind of modules that we recommend that you install. For example, only ones that have security advisory coverage, only ones that have a stable release. As a power user, you can go in and you can clear those filters and you can get more modules presented to you if you kind of know what you're doing, but we want to give you sensible defaults. Uh, and then you can drill through and uh, filter by category, which we'll talk a little bit more about at length. We also have accomplished actual click to install. So you can, if you have enabled all of the right uh, dependencies, for example, if you were at uh, the automatic updates talk this morning, they may have talked about package manager from automatic updates. Package manager is the sort of sub-module that we rely on that is the glue between your Drupal site and Composer. So if you have package manager enabled and you meet some of the other requirements that can allow it to be turned on, then <clears throat> you can actually hit add and install, watch it go, it runs the Composer commands in the background for you, gives you a little spinner, and enables the module for you at the end of the day so that if you want to turn on the admin toolbar, you can turn on the admin toolbar with the UI. We also have kind of an alpha stage Drupal API endpoint. So something that we've been using in order to build this system without having a real endpoint on Drupal.org uh, to date is we created a mock fixture. So we used to uh, it's a bunch of mumbo jumbo for a giant JSON file <laughs> that contains all of the data from Drupal.org about you know, what projects, what usage, what compatibility they have. And we've been actually taking point in time snapshots of Drupal's data and loading that in with Project Browser and using that to sort of mock up what the API would look like. But we actually do have an alpha stage Drupal API, real JSON API endpoint that uh, Fran from the association has been working very hard on over the last few months. So we're very close to actually being able to deprecate that sort of snapshot mock backend and use a real live uh, backend <coughs> of Drupal data. And we have tests. I would be remiss if I didn't point out that we have uh, a lot of really good automated tests written for the software that we've written so far. So on the backend side, that's a lot of what we've accomplished. We didn't introduce Leslie, but Leslie Glynn is my co-initiative lead here uh, and also my co-worker at Redfin, and I'll turn it over to her with some other stuff that we've accomplished. Thank you, Chris. I'm going to take this off because I'm very soft-spoken. Can everybody hear me out in the back there? Okay, perfect. Thank you. All right, so some of the things we've accomplished, we have a site builder subcommittee, more of looking at our target audience, site builders, those new to Drupal, making sure that what we're building is going to be useful to those audiences and to everybody that's going to be using it. So some of the things we've been doing is we uh, started the process of creating logos for all the different modules. So in order for it to show up in the project browser, it'd be nice to have a nice logo for the, for the module. So we've been working on those. And I'm going to talk about each one of these in more detail in a minute. Uh, we've been creating short, non-technical descriptions of the projects. And that is so that when people go to the cards and they say, here's, you know, I'm going to look at Project Browser, and it returns these different modules, you can get a quick glimpse 
in a non-technical way of what that module will do for you, okay? Um, the next thing we've done is we've worked hard on trying to reorganize the categories, and I'll talk again about that, but there's 55 categories right now. If you go to drupal.org, and that's, it's just a way to filter for different types of modules, and we'll talk about that, but we've been working hard to try and cut that number down because 55 is overwhelming when you're trying to go look for a module. You have no idea which category to even look at. So we're trying to make that set of categories much smaller so that it's, it's more of helpful of a filter for people who are looking for modules. And then we're working on the project detail page. Uh, as Chris said, in Drupal.org, it's very technical, very long, they're not consistent. Chris will talk about that in a little more detail. So these are some of the things we've been working on. All right, so how do you get involved? Everybody in this room can have a role in Project Browser. You can all contribute in your own way. So let's talk about some of the ways you can um, help us with this initiative. All right, so the first thing you can do, very straightforward, you can go to the Project Browser uh, Contrib Module page and just check it out. Try Project Browser out. Give us feedback. What works? What doesn't work? What do you understand? What is too tactical? Uh, so that's one thing you can do. So on the Project Browser page, it's highlighted down there in the bottom, it says try it now. Basically, you click on that button. It'll spin up a Drupal Pod instance of Drupal 10 with the latest version of Project Browser installed. So it'll create a Drupal site for you with Project Browser installed, and you can just walk through that and give us feedback. All right, so basically, once you do the Try It Now, it'll spin up this Drupal Pod site for you. Uh, there's, you know, it'll show you the code, so you can actually look at the, the code in the background. But really, what you want to do in the top right of the screen, there'll be a way for you to look at the actual website it's built. So where that's pointing to up there, that allows you to get a full screen version of your Drupal site. So click on that, and then you'll come to your website. And basically, you want to log in here. It's very secure. Don't tell anybody what the login here. It's an admin username, admin password. Again, it's on your local, so. Uh, but that is the login to get into Drupal Pod. And then you're going to go under Extend, like you do in the admin toolbar anyway. Go to Extend, and we have a new option there to browse modules. So very straightforward. So basically, you can help us just by spinning this up on your local machines, going to this. Um, site is, it is built and just giving us feedback. All right, so first, this is the, what the project browser looks like, and I'm gonna explain it just in high detail right here. But the first thing you should do is take a look at that note up the top. Chris talked about your real-time syncing of the data. It only syncs it when, when we do a manual update of the data, so what's on Drupal.org isn't gonna 100% match what's in the project browser. This is just a project browser, the data as of the last manual sync that was done, okay? So don't be confused. It's not gonna be, so if you look at something on Drupal.org and you say, hey, how come it doesn't come up in project browser with the new description? It's because it hasn't been synced yet. Um, so the default filters. These modules that it returns will be compatible with your version of Drupal, which is really cool. So I'm running a Drupal 10 site. It's only gonna bring me back projects or modules that are compatible with Drupal 10. It's not gonna bring me back Drupal 7 modules. It's not gonna bring me back Drupal 6 module where you gotta you know, go through and figure out what's useful for you. It's only gonna bring back modules that are compatible with your version of Drupal. Only, but the default is only brings you back modules that have security coverage and also that are actively maintained. So that set that comes back to you is hopefully gonna be for our target audience most helpful to them. Those are the ones they want to look at first. Now, are you somebody that's more technical and you want to look at something very specific? You can go to the advanced filters and you can you know, look for different things. I want to bring back the, the dev versions of modules, for instance. You can do that, but the default is has security coverage and is maintained and is compatible with my version of Drupal. Um, and the default sort, the order here is by most active installs. So the things that, have the, that are the most popular will be at the top of the list. Can you, there's a uh, sort by 
You can sort by other things. You can sort it alphabetically. There's different options there. But the default is based on the number of installs. All right, so these are the card views. So for each module, it's going to bring you back the logo, the name of the module, the short non-technical description there, which categories it belongs to. So the automated automatic updates initiative allows you to install modules on your site without going out and using Composer. So our target audience, if you say, you know, you need to go to a terminal window, you need to run Composer, you need to run all these commands, that's sometimes overwhelming. Um, so this allows you to do it right through the browser. So you can just click on the button that says add and install. And if I want to install Path Auto, I clicked on that button. And then I see down the bottom right a series of messages as it progresses through It'll go from in process to requiring modules and it'll have different stages down there. So another way you can help us is by just going into the project browser through the Try It Now as I just showed you and try and install some modules. Walk through, see the different messages you get. Are they helpful? You know, does it, does it successfully install? What do you see? That feedback is super helpful to us as well. So that's another way that you can help us out. Now, <clears throat> it also looks at dependencies. It runs Composer in the background. So because Token is a dependency on Path Auto, if I install Path Auto, it's going to install Token for me as well. Okay? So it does that automatically. You don't have to worry about what are all the dependencies, what other modules am I going to have to install to get Path Auto to install. Does that for you. You'll see they both have the installed at the bottom once it goes through the composer in the back end. Um, you may have to refresh the screen to see that token was installed. That was something that still needed to be worked on. So just uh, refresh your screen. So the Ajax will show you that it did install both. All right, so now what's another way you can help? Any designers or front end people that are interested in making logos in the room at all? Okay. So. Hmm? Nod. Yeah, exactly. That's great. That's, a, that's an easy way for you to contribute. So we have a meta issue. Meta just means it's a big issue with all, all the child issues for all the different projects or modules that need logos created for them. So basically, you go to this meta issue, and you just can select a child issue to work on. Uh, this is something designers can help with. Um, so you can... Can you advance the next one? Sorry. The arrow got me. Child issue. Oh, yeah. Down there. Those are the child issues. Okay. Start a smear. There you go. Uh, so to add a proposed logo, what you want to basically do is create a logo that's 512 by 512. Needs to be PNG format. No animations. And the file size should be 10K or less so that it pulls up quickly in the project browser. So those are the requirements. Um, it is using GitLab now for to pull the um, logos from. So the next screen, Chris, down here, this is in GitLab, so this is more for the maintainers. So the community will create the logos. Anybody that wants to contribute, create the logos. Somebody in the community reviews them and says, yep, it fits the requirements. It's 512, it's a PNG. Then we move the, the um, issue over to the maintainers, the module maintainer. They're going to go in and actually make the change in the project page on Drupal.org. Okay, so they're going to go and add this logo.png file, and then the logo. Once you do that, it's going to show up in GitLab. It's going to show up in the project browser, and it's going to show up on Drupal.org. So that logo is going to be used across all of those once it gets added to the code base. Now, one thing I should point out is. When we started this project a year and a half, and we started creating some of these logos, the initial thought was we were going to use the first image on the project page instead of use. We didn't know that we were going to be using the code for the logo.png. So if you did, if you are a maintainer and you did add the logo as your first image, we recommend that you take it off the first image and that you put it in the actual code base because that's where we're pulling from now. See us afterwards if you have a question on that. All right, as we're going to be updating the logos, we also need to update those short descriptions. I showed you on the cards where the short description comes in. 
if I'm browsing for a module, that's the first place I'm going to go to say, you know, do I think this module fits my criteria? So that's why we need this short uh, description that allows you to, to, you know, go through vetting first. Does it sound like it's going to be something that I'm interested in? We need documentation experts. Anybody that likes to just write information, write, you know, technical, this is how something works, you could help us with these short descriptions. So we're tra trying to answer the question, what does this module do in a non-technical way, in 200 characters or less? So that's what we're trying to do with these short descriptions. Who can help with this? As I said, people interested in documentation, site builders um, can help us, and pretty much anybody can help. Module maintainers, you're welcome to help as well. You can make these um, short descriptions. We just have to make sure that they're not too technical. All right, so how does a maintainer add this short description? Where does it go? Once the community has created this short description, somebody's reviewed it, made sure it fits the criteria, again, we send it over the, to the maintainer, they're going to update the summary field on the project page on Drupal.org. So again, the maintainer needs to do this. So they're just going to look at the description field, open up the summary, and that's where they're going to put in the description. Where does the description appear? It appears on the cards in the project browser. <laughs> All right, so uh, uh, how many maintainers are in the room? Anybody? Maintain Some maintainers, you maintain modules, projects, great. So what you're going to do is you're going to get two new issues. You're going to get one issue, update the logo for compatibility with Project Browser, and you're going to get another issue, update the summary on the detail page for compatibility with Project Browser. We'll tell you what the community has suggested or proposed for these things, and then you can make them in Drupal.org on your project page, okay? So maintainers, we will be giving you these two issues. All right, let's talk for a minute about categories. I mentioned categories before. Um, when maintainers go to add a project, they say, if somebody's looking for a project in these different categories or these different filters, they can add as many categories as they want right now. So we have modules that have no categories. We have modules that actually are listed under 30 different categories. Now, that's not very helpful if we're trying to, you know, use these categories in, in the way that they were intended. So we've come up, and we've spent quite a bit of time doing this, with a lot of time. That's an understatement. Uh, we've come up with a list of 19 categories from the 55. So what we need this week um, is for folks to fill out this form. Anybody, everybody, would like everybody to do this. There's a QR code there. Or you can go to the bit.ly PB for Project Browser Category Feedback. Basically, what this does is it gives you the list of the 19 categories. It gives you the scope or a little description of what each one of those does. And we just want you to tell us, does it, do, do these make sense? You know, are these descriptions, you know, would they be helpful if you were searching for modules? And did we miss anything? Before we can give these 19 out, or whatever we come up with for a set, out to all the maintainers. Now remember, how many, how many modules did we say currently we have? 50, Over 50,000, correct. So before we say, okay, update your modules, we want to make sure we have a good set of categories because we're not going to go back to the maintainers a second time, right? So we really need your feedback. Are these categories um, you know, going to be helpful or did we miss anything? So if you could all do that, if that's the only thing you do to help us out this week, that would be super helpful. We want you to help us more, but at least, at least do that. All right, Chris, I think, I think yeah. you're up. Okay. This one is where we're starting to sort of bridge the gap, and I'm just before this presentation started, I, I reclassified this one as being, I think, part of the MVP, even though it was a little bit marked not, but I'm feeling very ambitious ever since Dries said that word a few hours ago. So what I would like to do is have a real project detail page inside of Project Browser. So if you see the card view, you read the 200 characters, and you say, I think this is what I want, but I'd like a little bit more information. We can have you click through to that and just go to the page on drupal.org, or we can present you with a somewhat streamlined interface inside of Project Browser to help you get that additional information. So we are trying to decide what is most useful to people 
we've had a, a fair amount of discussion around that content hierarchy. We did a BOF in Prague uh, with uh, folks and talked about that. We sent a survey out recently and collected some data about what's useful. So I feel like we generally know what we want to present and we need help uh, getting it there. And so it's a great issue to work on if you're feeling like you want something a little bit meatier, maybe you do want to touch the spelt side of things and wire up if you have any experience with decoupled, fetching the data, getting it, and displaying it in some markup. Um, that's a very good issue to work on. Um, so before I embarrass myself further, I'm just going to say that on this next slide, this is what I have done to try to get some of the plumbing in place to make this work with, with zero design sense whatsoever. So this is kind of where we're at today, and we still don't even really like this. And a lot of stuff we didn't even have the, the data in the API for, and I think we may even want to get rid of this release data in this initial interstitial step. So this is an area where UI and UX people can help, where front-end JavaScript people can help, where back-end PHP people can help to collect data and push it out to the API call that we're making. Um, it's kind of a big piece, but I think it would be a huge boon uh, to be able to have sort of a second level of information page inside of the project browser so that there's even less of a need to jump off to Drupal.org um, from your site, because that is, as we saw in that second quote from Drupal, I want to be able to use the app store or the project browser right on my site and install modules with a click. So uh, this is a great issue for people who are, who are kind of wanting to sink their teeth into something. Okay. So like I said, the front end is decoupled and it's built with Svelte. So everything that you see between the header and the footer is presented by Svelte. So you kind of see basically the whole content region, if you're familiar with that parlance is all one empty div that gets uh, mounted with JavaScript with Svelte. Um, we like Svelte. We have some sort of cursory um, buy-in from folks on the core team that we could probably get Svelte into core. That's one way to get a modern front-end framework into core. Um, one of the reasons it makes it a little bit easier is it's compiled code, so you don't necessarily need a specific version to lean on. So for example, if you were trying to get React into core, much like when we got jQuery into core, we kind of said, oh, jQuery core ships with you know 1.7, and then you need jQuery update if you want to use 1.9. Loading React into core would be similar. With Svelte, you just get vanilla JavaScript at the end of the day, and you can then ship that. So that's one of the main reasons why we leaned on uh, Svelte for our front-end framework. So we're going to see where we get with that. <laughs> um, we are trying to uh, work against the Drupal design system, which is not necessarily something that we did early on. So there are some elements in our UI that are not uh, compatible with the Drupal design system, or, or don't, I shouldn't say compatible, adhere to the Drupal design system. And that's something that we are working on. There is a proposal um, to make the Svelte side now themable. And that's going to be a little bit of a tricky Drupalism that we're going to overcome. We have a core, not a core conversation, but we're, we're going to be discussing uh, some proposals around that tomorrow, I believe. So that is an important aspect here, is once that front end is themable, you can then do things on your own to you know, change classes, uh, change the design of the project browser yourself, uh, add data points to it, and that sort of thing if you have additional data coming in from your, uh, say, your custom uh, source plugin. Uh, accessibility review is another thing that people could be working on, and right now there's a meta issue for UX improvements. The UX group went through and uh, made a bunch of small issues, and a lot of those still need to be worked on. Uh, and there's, you know, in addition to what I've said, here are yet more front-end issues that could totally be worked on uh, here this week. So, you know, doing things like matching the Drupal design system or right now the image on that card view doesn't click through and we probably want it to. Um, oh, of course we do this at 2 o'clock. Guys, I've got to take my medicine. <laughs> my very persistent alarm is going off. 
I have to solve a math problem before it'll stop. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Uh, right now in the categories list, we don't show you when you click that facet or click through to say the accessibility category, we could show you that when you click here, there will be 35 modules. We don't do that now, um, but we want to. Um, there's a big blocker here, this improve UI of results count. It needs a, a good review, a good technical review, and it might even need a, a pretty hairy rebase. Um, so that's definitely stuff that can work on. Uh, there's some lightweight things here that is just, you know, if you click the X and clear the search box, it doesn't research with the, uh, with the keyword empty, and we need it to do that. So there's some good kind of novice issues in there if you're looking to do something kind of lightweight and dip your toes in, then we have uh, some code issues that you can work on in that. On the back end, we have mm, some meatier things. Um, so one thing that we can do is we can add, add, add to our code base, and then we can even uninstall, but they'll stay in our composer code base. Uh, we want to actually remove them using the project browser UI and, you know, issue like a composer remove, right? We don't have that at all now. We have uh, some MRs open that have started to advance that work, but that needs some help. Um, like I said, we want to switch to using the real Drupal.org JSON API endpoint and deprecate the mock, uh, and that needs a good technical review as well. And again, a little bit of novice issues. Uh, the tab order we probably want to change. We probably want to be the first way that you install modules and not the third tab in that, in that list now. Um, and then, of course, like I was describing around the project detail page, we definitely want to implement whatever that is and whatever we decide there. So really, what is next for Project Browser? Number one is actually not Project Browser related, but it's getting Package Manager into core. Um, since that's a dependency of ours um, and of automatic updates, we want to get Package Manager into core. Adam, how close are we on that? On What's that? Working on, Working on it. We've got a few open issues, like a bunch. A bunch. All right, so that. Get very, very hedgy about this. <laughs> good, good for you. Adam is non-committal, but, um, and, and that's what we need. We need to get Package Manager into core before Project Browser can get into core. So we definitely want to throw as much effort that way as possible as well. And then we have issues tagged as core MVP. So these are the issues that we actually do want to go into the MVP that would make us say, this is a good minimum viable product and we can put it into core as it is. Um, this originally said 13 issues, but like I said about an hour ago, I added the project detail page to the core MVP list, and I'm uh, just going to stay optimistic that we can get that taken care of. Um, it's already plumbed in the Svelte app, it's just not fully complete, and uh, so we could undo it and just link to Drupal.org, but I feel like, no, let's get it in there. So that's, that's our plan, that's what's next. So I'm going to turn it back over to Aaron Winborn Award winner Leslie Glenn for <laughs> to talk about contribution. All right, thanks, Chris. <laughs> All right, so why contribute a project browser? Well, the most important thing is this is the first place people will go to. They install Drupal. The next thing they're going to do is try to add functionality to their Drupal site. Um, so wouldn't it be cool for you to be part of that? Everybody that installs a Drupal site that see Project Browser, you can say, wow, I, I helped build Project Browser. So we really think that that's a great win for you to get involved with this. Uh, anybody can get involved. We, you, we can use any type of individual with any skill level. You could be a beginner. You could be a super expert maintainer. We need all of you to help us out. Uh, I do have a bit.ly link there, uh, bit.ly PB contributions for project browser contributions. I try to keep that updated so even once you leave here this week, that will always have opportunities for you to contribute to the project browser. So that's a one-stop shop to go to get all the different links that Chris and I have talked about today. Um, definitely, uh, you know, take a, take a picture of the QR code or go to that link and just follow that. And you can give that to your colleagues when you get back and continue to contribute. So where can you find us this week? Um, Chris is going to be in general contribution every day, most of the time when he's not at a session that's related to Project Browser. Uh, we have two BOFs tomorrow, for those of you who don't know what BOFs are, they're like discussion groups. 
the birds of a feather, people who are like-minded, thinking of the same type of you know, thing they want to work on. So we have one tomorrow from 8.30 to 9, uh, updating content on the project pages. So that's kind of what I talked about with logos, descriptions, how you can help with that, and some of the challenges we're having with that. And then from 9 to 9.30, we're having a hands-on. So come, you know, try things out, give us feedback. Uh, we'll help you out getting that. Try it now working on your machine, anybody that wants that, so you can come to those two birds of a feathers. On Wednesday, there's the Drupal Initiative keynote, which I'm speaking at. That's just a real high-level look at all the different initiatives that are going on and seeing where you think you best can fit. Um, and then you contribute for the rest of the day um, to that initiative. So definitely come listen to that, whether you choose to do Project Browser or another initiative. It'd be great if you just come listen to that at uh, 9 o'clock on Wednesday and stay for the day and help contribute. And, and there'll be mentors all day, so there'll be people to help you, so don't be intimidated. I can't contribute. Anybody, as I said, anybody in this room, everybody in this room can contribute. We all started with, you know, going to our first contribution um, event. Uh, and then Thursday, there's general contribution all day, so you definitely can come help on Thursday as well. So how can you join it um, beyond this week? Go to the Drupal Slack and join the Project Dash Browser channel. That's where we have meetings. We have a, a site builder meeting that I run on Tuesdays at 4 p.m. Eastern. There's also a more general on Wednesday at 10 a.m. that Chris runs. Those are asynchronous. They're in Slack, so we just start threads and people just contribute to the threads. So if you're not in our time zone or you have a meeting at that time, check in later on that day and you can just give your feedback, give your um, helpful comments to us in the Slack channels. Uh, you can work on the issues that we talked about. Check out the issue queue. And I want to make sure I thank you. We've had probably 100 people contribute things here and there over the past year or so to the project browser. So thank you that everybody that has contributed and to everybody that in here and that will contribute. And Chris and I, that's how you can reach us on Project Browser, at Chris from Redfin and at Leslie G. And I just want to thank Redfin that Chris mentioned earlier uh, for supporting some of our time on the Project Browser initiative. And now I think we're ready for Q&A. So who has questions? We did decent timing on that. Oh, yeah, not bad. Two minutes late. Any questions? I just have a question. Go ahead. So there's a short description. Right, so the, qu the, the question is, um, for the short descriptions, do we have editors or do we have folks that are reviewing the short descriptions that, that are created to make sure they fit the requirements and they're not too technical? The answer is, you're all reviewers. Anybody that wants to, in the community that wants to review those issues can. So you don't have to be an editor, you don't have to have you know, documentation skills. Anybody can read those and say, oh, I wouldn't understand this, I think that's too technical, or it's too long, it's more than 200 characters. So, you know, you create the short description, somebody else in the community reviews it. So there is a second level there before we give it to the maintainer. Same with logos. You can create the logos or you can just go and look at the logos and make sure that they fit the criteria. But you don't have anybody who's so you're saying, okay, we actually want, you know, some consistent language or anything that way between. No, but we were, the, the question was, we, do we have somebody dedicated to make sure that all the descriptions and such are consistent? The answer is no. We have some people that have done multiple reviews. would love to have that. If there's somebody in the community or a group of people who want to review those in a consistent, we'd love to have you hop on board and help us out. I'll just add to that. There is uh, a process for all Drupal issues which require that they go from uh, getting written to then going to a needs review status and then that someone else will review it and say it looks good or bad. Then it goes to reviewed and tested by the community. So at that point then it always kind of falls to Leslie or myself to then at the end when it says RTBC, we are always taking a final look at it. So at the end of the day we are probably responsible. We're kind of the two at the end of the day to make sure it's consistent and non-technical. 
So there is a process built in, um, but it's a lot more community oriented than maybe a publishing workflow would be inside a university or something. Yeah. Yeah. Other questions? The question is, uh, where does the actual contribution for logos and descriptions happen? So there is a issue for each uh, logo and description for each of the top 100 modules. Some of them are closed now, yay. Um, we're targeting the top 100 sort of most popular modules, but you know we can continue on from there. So the issue opens with something like create a new logo for XYZ. And then as we go down, some people will upload some ideas for a logo or for a description. Other people will chime in and say, mm, I like that, I don't like that, it needs work. And then ultimately we update the issue summary with uh, the proposed description or the proposed logo so that what we've kind of reached consensus on is right there in the top in the issue summary. Uh, and then it will go through that same process, you know, needs review, reviewed and tested by the community, and then the maintainers themselves actually will say, okay, this is good, I do agree that it meets all the criteria, and then we'll move it over to the maintainer's queue. So if it's like a logo for the token module, then we'll put an issue in the token module uh, issue queue for them to say, hey, put this logo in. So, yep. Anything else? Well, we are happy to be here for you. Uh, if you have any questions or want to come say hi, feel free to find us. Like I said, I'll probably be in the contribution room most of the time. Leslie will be all over the place probably most of the time. Um, anything else that you want to add? Yeah, I just wanted to say hopefully you've all found something that you can help with, whether it's on our initiative or some other. Contributing back to the community is super important to, the, to, the, to Drupal to advance the project. So thank you for coming and listening. And um, come and let us know if you want to help out. We'll see you all on Wednesday on Contribution Day, hopefully. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.